Okay, it is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, and this is for Regional Cuisine. We are in our final unit, which we started yesterday in class, on the Northwest, which includes Idaho. So in honor of the state of Idaho this week, we are going to be doing a twice-baked potato. Okay, so there are some things I'm going to show you um, for the filling. The potatoes have already been baked earlier so we'll talk about those as well because they needed at least you know 50 minutes to an hour to cook so that was done a little while ago so they're still warm and there everything else is ready to go okay so we're going to start off with a large mixing bowl because this is where our potatoes after we scoop them out are going to go into this bowl right i've also got a potato masher handy all right you can use a fork uh, to do these. You can use an electric beat or two to do your twice baked potatoes. You mash it, but I find it tends to make the potatoes a little bit gluey, right? The texture changes and it gets really weird. Um, I like it a little bit more rustic. I'm not afraid of little bits of potato in there. So um, I prefer to do them by hand to get a nice uh, fluffy kind of texture to them. So we've got our mixing bowl. Like I said, we've got our potato masher and we're going to start off with some ingredients that are going to go into our potato filling, right? The first is going to be Four tablespoons of melted butter. So this is just unsalted butter that was melted on top of my stove, honestly, because uh, the oven is on. And uh, if you don't have your oven on at the time that you're doing this, just melt it in the microwave for a few seconds at a time, 10, 15 seconds um, as you go. So we're going to put that into this bowl here. Right. So that's four tablespoons of unsalted butter is our first part of this. And to this, we're going to add in some grated onion. So we're going to take a little small yellow onion, and I'm going to cut this stem end off, but I'm going to leave that root end intact because that's what's going to hold it together. So I'm going to come in and just trim off that top stem end. And then we are going to cut this in half. Um, the recipe that I'm sharing the link for calls for a whole small onion. I find it's a little overpowering, so we're going to go with half an onion instead. Okay. Um, you could add more if you like. I don't want it to overpower the flavors of the cream and butter. So the idea of this twice baked potato is a great recipe to use for leftover baked potatoes. So if you bake a bunch and you have leftover from dinner, you can do this with them afterwards, or you can just bake them just for the sole purpose of making twice baked potatoes. So I'm going to use the box grater. I've got my half an onion here. Piece of skin from the outside and we're just going to grate it you could finally chop this um i'm just going to use a box grater because it's just quick just watch out for your hand when you get down near the end but this is why we keep that root attached okay is because i want to make sure that it stays together while i'm using the box grater. Okay. so i'm using the largest hole on the side a lot of this is actually ending up attached to the inside, but we're just going to quickly tap that out in a second. Okay. And you get down as low as you can go without scraping up your knuckles. Stop. And give it a couple of good taps on the cutting board, right, to make sure that you get everything out from the inside. All right. So that's our grated onion. That's going to get mixed in with our four tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, so this gives us a nice fine consistency. A little bit of the juice and all. Then we're going to be adding in some heavy cream. Okay. Now you could use whipping cream for this if that's what you happen to have in the fridge. Um, you could do milk, but for honestly, for best flavor, you want to go with a good heavy cream. Right. It's got a higher butter fat to this. So we're going to be measuring out a half a cup of heavy cream. It may seem like a lot, but it's going to be for four potatoes that are going to get split. So we'll end up with eight pieces total. Okay. So we're just going to mix our butter and our onion here. We're going to add in our heavy cream. Make sure we get all that goodness in there. Okay. And then recipe calls for fresh parsley and i hate to buy a whole bunch of parsley just to use a little bit of it if i'm not going to be using it for something else so i'm going to be using some dried parsley instead today because i already have that on the shelf always so 
it calls for like a half a cup of fresh parsley. So I'm gonna do about a tablespoon in this mixture and a tablespoon in our breadcrumb topping, and that'll be more than enough for this recipe. So this will give a little bit of flavor, but it's also gonna give it some color, right? We wanna have those little green flecks inside our potato mixture. Okay. So a tablespoon of dry parsley. And just give that a little stir. And then our potatoes are gonna get mashed right into this mixture. So we're just getting everything all set for our flavors, right? We're gonna do a good pinch of kosher salt. A couple good turns of cracked black pepper. Okay. Don't be shy on the pepper. So about 10. So we've got our butter, our grated onion, heavy cream, parsley, salt, and pepper, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the potatoes that we're gonna be adding into this. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute, and we're gonna talk about the baked potatoes. So now, the baked potatoes, these are the ones I did here, and this is how I baked them in the oven, was on this rack. This is cooled down enough to touch now, obviously, but when it comes out of the oven, you wanna to wanna to have some pot holders. So with your Idaho russets, you wanna look for a potato that says a russet potato, right? Those are the best ones for baking. You want to make sure that you wash the potatoes really well and then make sure to pat them dry with a clean paper towel or uh, dish towel, right, that's clean. And then afterwards, you want to take and rub each potato with either some vegetable oil or olive oil just for a light coating on all, on both sides all the way around. And then hit them with a generous sprinkle of salt and pepper, right? So you get a nice coating of flavor on that skin which will make it easier to eat if it's got some flavor to it. A lot of people don't like the potato skin because it doesn't have a lot of flavor. But by baking them like this on a rack, the air is able to circulate underneath and you don't get that weird, flat, crusty spot on the bottom that you do if you put these on a sheet pan. So try and bake them on a rack. 425 is what I had them in the oven for, for 50 minutes. Just before you put them in the oven, pierce them a few times on each potato on each side, just so that the air gets in a little bit better and steam comes out of the potato, okay? So these have been cooling for a little bit. They're still pretty warm, but you wanna make sure your potatoes are soft, right? Because we're gonna be cutting these to scoop them out. So I've got four potatoes here, which is gonna give us eight halves. So we're gonna then fill, okay? So I'm gonna use a serrated knife, because I want to be gentle on these. Okay, so sharp knife sometimes, if it's not sharp enough, might pull and tear and then it cracks the potato. So a nice serrated knife. You just want to gently use that sawing motion to come through. Split your potatoes. And we're going to be scooping these out. Okay, because what we want is those potato skins, the shells, to make little cups for our twice baked potatoes. You see this still hot and steamy on the inside right but they're not too hot to handle so once they come out of the oven let them cool for 10 to 15 minutes before you try and do this part so you don't burn their hands okay so now we're going to take a large tablespoon and i'm going to scoop the potato out but i want to make sure that i'm leaving the potato skin intact okay so to do that just kind of take the spoon on the edge right kind of like if you're scooping out an avocado right Come in just a little bit, loosen it up. Start to pull that potato out. Now I'm gonna be mixing that potato right into that bowl here with my cream and butter and parsley and the grated onion. So we still wanna have a shell left because the potato mixture is gonna go back in. So we still want it to be able to hold its shape on its own. So you don't wanna end up with big holes inside your potato. So just kind of score them and scoop them. This is something that's fun for little kids to do. But this is a great way to use those leftover baked potatoes. If you don't know what to do with them and make them into something else. And then you can freeze them to have on a different night. So if you're going to bake potatoes anyways, bake extra. Then make your twice baked potatoes to have for dinner at a, a different time. Okay. So we're going to do this is scoop out each one of these. Like I said, this is going right into the bowl with the cream and our butter and everything else. That's going to give it a lot of great flavor. So we're getting our potato shells. 
this is what happens when you order potato skins, right? Is you get, they scoop the potato out and you're left with the skin. It gets filled with other things. So don't, don't skimp on the potato skins, right? They're good for you. It's one of the crunchiest parts of the potato. And it's easy to use for many things, especially this. All right, so this is our last potato, last half. So like I said, four potatoes cut in half, you're gonna get eight pieces. So once your these are filled, a half is usually perfectly fine for somebody if you're having you know, a full meal with you know chicken or steak or you know vegetables and things like that, okay? So we're gonna set these aside here. I'm just putting these onto my sheet pan with my sill pads. You could do some parchment, something for easy cleanup. We're just putting these to the side here for a minute while we mix up our potato mixture, which is now here, right? So all the potato that was scooped out is right in this bowl, and you want to get in there really good with that potato masher and break all that up. Okay. Missed one potato, so we're going to come back and have that one. I thought I had them all. It's okay. Got our potatoes going. So you really want to break these up really good. It'll look loose, but you want to have some moisture in this because, like I said, it's twice baked, so it's gonna go in the oven again. And a little bit of moisture to it will be fine for holding on to our final part of this, which is going to be our breadcrumb topping. Okay. So for each of these, once we fill them. I'm going to want to have a little something to put on top to give it a little bit of crunch, okay? So what I've got here is another four tablespoons of butter, so the other half a stick of butter melted. And we're going to make a breadcrumb topping to go on top of the potatoes. So we're going to come in and grab one cup of panko breadcrumbs, right? I like these because they give really good crunch for a topping. So we're going to come in one cup right into that melted butter. We want that to soak up. It's going to be kind of the texture of wet sand when it's done. But it's going to adhere well to the top of our potatoes. So then I'm going to do another tablespoon of dried parsley. So we want to have a little bit of flex in there. And then also for color, we're going to add in a teaspoon's worth of brown paprika. Pretty red color. Okay. And then also a little salt and pepper in this. So we have layers of seasoning throughout. Just a good pinch of kosher salt, a couple of grinds, cracked black pepper. Grab our spoon here, and then we're going to mix it all together. Okay. You want to make sure to coat all of those breadcrumbs with the butter because that's what's going to caramelize and give you that toasty brown crunchy topping, plus lots of flavor. So texture and flavor, all in one combination. All right, scrape that in really well. Okay, and then you can see that mixture. Kind of looks like wet sand from the beach, right? So easy part of this now is we're gonna fill our potatoes. And you can alter this. This is just one variation of this recipe of a twice baked potato. You could put in sour cream if you don't have heavy cream. You could put in um, cheeses and things like that. Lots of variables that you can change up. I guess I'm just giving my potatoes another little mix here. Okay, just basically a mashed potato filling. I'm just stirring this up really good to make sure it's well blended. Set that to the side. I'm gonna grab our big spoon here. So a large metal tablespoon works good for this for filling. So we want to fill the potato skins with our mashed potato filling, right? So this has got lots of flavor in here because we've got all that onion, parsley, cream, butter. Right, so we want to fill each of our little potato boats. I like to fill them 
level it first and see if I have extra, I'll go back and chop them off more. So you really want to pack that in there, make sure you're filling the entire thing. And then these are going to get our chopping of our breadcrumbs afterwards. Okay. And then they're going to get baked a second time. But what you can do is if you have, say, baked potatoes left over tonight, you make some twice baked potatoes, you can stop at the point when you put the breadcrumbs on, don't put them back in the oven, and freeze them. Right? So then you'll have them for something for a different time. Right. So just filling all those little potatoes up. And if you have extra left in your bowl, go back in and chop off any that look like they need a little more. Looking pretty good. If you could put chives in here, whatever favorite herbs that you have. There we go. Okay. So a little bit of potato left. This one looks a little skimpy. Add a little more to here. Like I said, and it does look wet, and that's okay, because what's going to happen is it's going to dry out more because it's going to get baked again. So you don't want to have this mixture to be too dry to begin with, because then your potato is going to end up being dry when you eat them. There we go. So we've got our potato mixture all set and ready to go, right? So, so far we've baked these potatoes, cut them out, scoop them. I said combine that with our grated onion our cream, butter, our seasoning, our parsley and things. And now we're gonna take the breadcrumb mixture, so the breadcrumbs and butter, parsley, paprika, salt, pepper, that's it. And this is gonna go on top of each of the potatoes. Okay. So when you're doing this, I'm gonna try to be as neat as possible. Here. I like to bring the potatoes to the crumbs, okay? Instead of getting the crumbs all over the tray because then those will tend to burn on the tray so this way bring a potato over the bowl and just give it a good coating and give it a little bit of a press too right so that way it fully adheres and sticks to the top just like that you can see that color from that paprika and the breadcrumbs, right? So that way they're not boring looking. Put a little jazz to them. Now you could also top these with cheese. A little Parmesan, a little shredded cheddar. Those pair great with potatoes, right? If you're going to freeze them and bake them a different day, leave the cheese off. Bake them, and when they're almost done baking, that's usually when I put my cheese on. Right? So you try to freeze them with the cheese and the crumbs. The cheese will fall off, and you have to put more back on anyways. Okay. Okay, so come in here and pack those on really well. If you end up with a little extra crumb, that's fine. You can always go back and add some more if you've got any empty spots. But because that mixture inside is nice and moist with that heavy cream, these breadcrumbs will stick right to it. Right? Like I said, a little press with the back of the spoon. That's it. Easy peasy. Great idea for leftovers. It's also a good hearty winter side dish, right? Instead of just mashed potatoes again, something a little bit different, right? So now at this point, these need to go back into the oven, 425 degrees. It's going to be about 15 minutes, right? Keep a close eye on them. When they start to brown on the top, that's when you want to pull them out. Because these were already warm, I know that it's not going to take long for these to heat up. Now, if I freeze the twice baked potatoes and I'm going to use them to put in the oven, Oftentimes, I'll pull them out the night before, let them thaw slowly in the fridge overnight, throw them on a cookie sheet pan, right? And then they might take 15 to 20 minutes to cook at that point because they're cold, right? So you can always check, just stick a fork or something in the inside, feel the temperature of it and see if they're hot. You want to make sure they're hot on the inside because everything's already been fully cooked once, so it's not a safety thing, but you want to make sure that they're hot enough to eat. All right, so I'm going to set these to the side for a second. I've got some came out of the oven a little while ago. 
that have cooled. So that's why I can be able to touch the tray so I can show you guys the finished product, right? So these are the finished twice baked potatoes. And this is just two potatoes that I mashed up early just to be able to show you, right? Like I said, you can serve these with some chicken, some steaks, things like that, right? You want to be a little bit creative, you know, chef it up a little bit, right? A little extra parsley on the plate when you serve them. And you can also put a little extra paprika as well. And that's it. That is your twice baked potatoes, right? Nice and easy to do. Filling, great way to use up leftovers, all right? Um, like I said, you can adapt those fillings. You can do things like sour cream in them or cheeses, different herbs and spices, um, whatever flavor, com you know, combinations you prefer. You can mix up and you can change them every time. So every time you make twice pot baked potatoes, they're a little bit different, right? So it doesn't have to always be the same exact recipe. So that's it, our twice baked potatoes in honor of Ohio.